Romania is a land of a thousand faces. The crossing point between the Occident and the Orient and a melting pot of different cultures. It is also a country unlike any other in Europe, with over 60% of the Carpathian Mountains weaving through it Romania is the custodian of Europe's last great wilderness area, its largest remaining forest, and two-thirds of its surviving alpha predators. But increasingly, this unique country's natural and cultural heritage is under threat from reckless development, and a race to modernize, which is often destroying the very things that could ensure prosperity and a sustainable livelihood for generations to come. Welcome back to our eight-part road trip of Romania's historic regions, in which we discover fabulous treasures, natural wonders, medieval marvels, mouth-watering dishes, and meet the people that make this one of the warmest and most hospitable nations in the world. We will also be finding out how this hugely misunderstood country is emerging from post-communist chaos and identifying some of the challenges it faces and how tourism could provide one of its best hopes for the future. This week, we're heading east to Dobroja. It's a region rich in history and modern ethnic diversity, not least because it incorporates Romania's only stretch of coastline. Here, the Danube Delta, Europe's largest wetland, fans out into the Black Sea, creating another vast and fragile ecosystem, interwoven with myriad waterways, reed beds and lakes, meandering for over 3,000 square kilometers. On the edge of this watery kingdom sits Jurilovka, a small fishing community founded in 1826 by Lipovans who fled Russia following religious persecution by Peter the Great. It is now experiencing a renaissance thanks to cultural tourism. I'm here to find out why and see what this sleepy backwater has to offer the intrepid traveler. Hotel Bella Marina is a converted cruise ship moored on the edge of the picturesque harbor, looking out over Razelm Lake. It offers cozy cabins and provides a good base from which to see the local sites. Foremost of these is the ancient Greek fortress of Argamum, one of the oldest settlements in Romania, mentioned in documents dating from the 6th century BC. Today, most of it remains hidden beneath many meters of earth and coastal grasslands. But even the little that remains above ground is an arresting sight. I'm here to meet local guide Marius, who I hope could shed more light on this eerie windswept ruin. Charlie, imagine that 7,000 years ago, this was just the Black Sea, and the Danube brought so many sediments and created this amazing and very strategically important gulf that was very appealing for the Greeks. Okay. When they came here, and they, they created the first settlement here on the Black Sea. So this was really to supervise the trade routes? Right, yeah. and to create some connection with the local tribes. This was a city itself, wasn't it? It was a huge city. Imagine what the boats that are coming over the sea, yeah. and they're seeing the, the big fortress. Are there any plans to excavate or restore parts of the fort here? Plans are always, but now we wait for the implementation, because here they discovered so many tombs, and this was the oldest Greek tomb from Romania. Now it's in the uh, Tulcea Museum. Now we can use only the imagination to think how it was before, because we know that underneath our feet, there are so many things to discover. But besides that, it's an advantage also, because for the tourists, when they're coming in a such a beautiful and huge place like this, they enjoy it. It's a peaceful place. They don't stay in a queue, they're just enjoying the view and imagining how the world was before. And of course, you've decided to join the people here by setting up your own place, haven't you? 
Well, together with my wife, who lived in Bucharest, we were in incorporation in companies, and we decided to come here to establish a guest house for the people, because we believe that tourism is uh, offering so many things. It can educate people, it can make people more relaxed, it can bring together people. And also to have a sustainable tourism, an ecotourism, an agrotourism. Uh, well, it seems to be working. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a beginning, but uh, we have many people that are close to us, and uh, this is our vision. Jurilovka is a pretty little town. Its dusty streets are peppered with a growing number of traditional guest houses in distinct Lipovan style, with brightly painted walls and wooden timber frames. I have an appointment at one of them with resident chef Angela Luca, who'd kindly agreed to show me how to cook a colorful delicacy, roulada de peste, or fish roulade. Bună ziua. Dobry den, bună ziua. Bine ați venit la Jurilovka. This is a beautiful house. Da, este o casă tradițional, no. lipovenească. Sunt turiști care vin la noi pentru că le place tradiția, să vadă cum au trăit părinții, bunicii noștri, no. pentru că așa am și lăsat căsuța, așa cum a fost ea, cum s-a locuit aici, a fost foarte puțin renovată și restul am lăsat exact, exact cum a fost Fantastic. înainte. Poftiți în bucătăria noastră. So, what's on the menu? Astăzi vă voi pregăti o ruladă din trei culori umplută cu pește. Roulade is normally a sweet dish lined with fruit or chocolate. To create one with a carp filling certainly makes for an intriguing take on the more conventional recipes. First of all, she separates the eggs and places the whipped egg white into three bowls, while combining the yolks with oil, flour and baking powder into three separate bowls. To these are added white cheese, spinach, or tomato paste, and cream. This generates three colors that make up the roulade, which after being sifted back in with the egg white, are poured onto a baking tray. Following 10 minutes at 200 degrees, Angela flips out the base and rolls it up in a damp towel. Lastly, she creates the filling by mixing filleted carp with soured cream. While waiting for the base to cool, Angela told me a bit more about the Lipovan community. It's a community very strong, very united, a community very religious, close to God and to our culture, to the beautiful, to nature. Our holidays are decalated with 13 days after the Orthodox Roman Catholic. We keep the old calendar of Julian, and the services are held in the old church in Slavona. And the people speak Russian? Da, oamenii mai vorbesc. Vorbesc și rusa. Tinerii vorbesc mai mult românește. Cei bătrâni păstrează încă tradițiile străvechi, încercând să vorbească nu mai rusește. Back indoors, the base was ready to unroll. The filling is then added before being rolled up again and chilled for five more minutes in the fridge. Ia, yeah, să vedem rulada noastră. Ah. Oh. Să și tăiem. Wow, Angela, that looks amazing. Yeah. Well, this segment, because all three segments are going to taste different, has a slightly cake-like quality. Also, you can taste the fish and the cream. I wouldn't say it's a low-fat option, but it is fantastic, and it's something you can easily cook at home. Well, it's clouded over a bit, but hopefully by tonight, when we have the music and the dancing and the fire, we'll get some stars as well. But anyway, that was beautiful. It looked beautiful and it tasted beautiful. And as far as I'm concerned, this is one of my favourite flavours of Romania so far. On the far side of Lacul Golovitsa, a great sandy bar runs north and south along the coastline, separating salt from fresh water and forming an integral part of the Danube Delta Biosphere Reserve. Visitors can come here and marvel at one of the most unspoilt stretches of coastline in Europe. Very unexpected. We've traveled all the way across the lake, 
The reeds have opened up. Here's this channel, thatched roofs, and lots of people in paddle boats wearing life jackets. Safety first. This is Gura Portidze Resort Village. During the summer months, a group of Lipovan singers often come and serenade guests around the campfire, performing songs and dances so specific to this region they can't be heard anywhere else in the world. Unfortunately, it was too late to run by the time I realized our musical troupe required some audience participation. Well, that was a slightly embarrassing end to a wonderful day here with the Lipovan community in Jurilovka. It's only our first day in the Danube Delta, and already I'm feeling like I'm in another country. But of course, that's the beauty of Romania. There are so many different cultures within one country, so it feels like you're traveling the world, but you're really only in one place. And tomorrow, we go deeper into the Delta. The night's excitement was not over, however as we encountered the first crack of thunder on the way home to Jurilovka. And there are few more exciting meteorological spectacles than an electrical storm over the Danube Delta. This is what's amazing about the Danube Delta. There's no average weather here. It's either very cold or it's very hot, or you've got the raw elemental power of lightning and thunder. I was going to go to bed, but this is better than Guy Fawkes Night or fireworks displays. Just standing out here with a beer, watching it all. The next morning, it dawned dry and bright. It was time to leave the Lipovans behind and drive an hour inland to visit another one of Romania's diverse ethnic groups. The Aromanians, sometimes called Macedonians, originated from the southern Balkans, Greece, Macedonia, and southwest Bulgaria. Many came to Romania during the Middle Ages to escape the Ottoman Empire, but more recently, in 1925, King Ferdinand appointed them land and privileges to settle here. I wanted to see how the Aromanian culture differs from the Romanian, and how they have built their own society here in this remote part of Dobrogea. What is it? Ah, you're not finished, Charlie. You're not finished in community at Armaniasca. Can you even fly? Salut! Salut! It's a bit early for Polinka, no? No, sunt in timpul liber. Perfect. Când o bea, bea, când o distrează, distrează, când îi tu. Lucru, lucru. Nu le amestec una cu alta, așa. How do people make a living in a place like this? Principala sursă de venit armenilor noștri este creșterea animalelor, în special. Pentru că atunci când a venit din Bulgaria, a fost problema numărul unu. Unde ne ducem? Unde sunt pășuni pentru animalele noastre? A doua, este lucrarea pământului. Foarte mulți s-au ocupat de agricultură. Și a treia sursă de venituri este comerțul. Din cele mai vechi timpuri, românii s-au ocupat de comerț. Și au ajuns în vârful, i-au i-au depășit după unii, chiar și pe și chiar și pe jidani. What about the young people? Are they still keeping the traditions, the Macedonian traditions? <laughs> e o întrebare foarte bună. Toată mass media, toată tehnica din ziua de astăzi și-a pus amprenta și la armâni, să știți. Dar ca să păstrăm aceste tradiții, mm -hmm. noi am luat legătură cu statul român prin guvern, prin misterul de învățământ și am reușit să obținem pentru tineri armâni, pentru cei care duc la școală, cursul opțional de limbă și tradiție. Prin curs armânesc, da. Prin cursul ăsta reușim să mai stabilizăm, să mai frânăm un pic asimilare, care este cu pași repezi la orice etnie din asta. Is everybody in this community Macedonian? Dacă luăm localitatea în care yeah. suntem acum, procentajul este în jur de 80-90%. Când m-am dus la în clasa întâi, eu nu știam să vorbesc românește deloc. Mm. Dar pe parcurs am reușit să depășim acest handicap și să ajungem unde am ajuns fiecare. Dacă ați văzut și exemplele în sport 
și peste tot, cum este Hagi. Când s-a apucat de o treabă, a dus-o până la capăt. Nu mai vorbim de Simona Halep, care este tot un alt ia. exemplu de armână, da. așa? Ia, ia. Născută chiar din satul ăsta. De aici este Simona Halep. Părinții ei de aici sunt. Părinții mei. Părinții ea. Și a ajuns în vârful în care a ajuns. De ce? Pentru că a avut, a urmat tradiția și educația de acasă. Being a hospitable bunch, it was hardly surprising when the local mayor invited us back to his house for a quick bite and a further insight into Aromanian society. Lunch consisted of piperki targasiti and cheese pie, among other delicacies. What's specific about Macedonian cuisine? Sunt specific și a românilor de ce? Pentru că fii care femeia română știi să pregătească așa ceva. Cel puțin până acum, Fata care era în casă era pregătită de mama ei, trebuia să știe tot să facă. Deci plăcinta, fiecare ingredient, plăcintă, foi și așa, se făceau în casă. Nu se ducea să le cumpere de, de la magazin, dar nu. Tot este pregătit în casă. How are we going to eat this? Ah, da. By hands? Mâncăm no? cu mâna. Ok. Dar de regulă, like plăcinta okay. cu mâna. Thank you so much. Uai, uai, mm. la mama. Charlie, noi armânii de regulă combinăm utilul cu plăcutul. Să știi, după o mâncare bună, merge și o muzică bună, pentru că of ajută course. la digestie, ajută da. la voia bună. Pe chestia asta, întâmplător, nu am fost organizați așa, dar avem și muzică tradițională. Muzica! Maestro! I didn't realize you brought dancers as well. <laughs> that was totally brilliant. Love the music, and how unexpected to get dancing as well. Romania's got talent. It's just one thing left to do. I was told this is a delicacy. The eye of the sheep. I saw this done on Indiana Jones in the Temple of Doom, I think. So I promised myself before leaving today, I'd also <laughs> give it a whirl. <laughs> Strangely very nice. Heading northeast towards the sea, the low hills melt into flatlands. Thanks to its proximity to the spice routes, this region, more than anywhere else in Romania, has witnessed thousands of years of colonial history. Wherever there is a hill or vantage point, you can often find evidence of bygone civilizations like this fortress at Enesala. Eventually, even solid ground itself dissolves into a labyrinth of lakes, channels, and reed beds. This is the Danube Delta, a place as beautiful as it is inhospitable. Yet here, man continues to coexist with nature through harsh winters, mosquitoes, blazing summers, and constantly shifting waterways mud banks and fickle peninsulas that creep right to the edges of the Black Sea. To enter this harsh but magical kingdom, you have to leave the road behind and take to the water. My destination is the coastal town of Sventu Gheorghe, perched at the very mouth of the River Danube, an unlikely but breathtaking place to spend a few days getting back to nature.
Welcome to Green Village, an eco-resort on the edge of town. Traditional wooden lodges cluster around a restaurant, spa and cinema, affording guests a comfortable base camp from which to explore Europe's largest wetland. Rooms are comfortable and stylish, plus a short walk from your front door and you can take a boat just about anywhere in the delta. To immerse myself in this amphibious lifestyle, I recruited local and guide Anka Simeon for a trip down the leafy backwaters. How do you know how to find your way through these channels? Because there are thousands of them. Yes, I think you should uh, be born here. Yeah, like to you. To find, like <laughs> me. <laughs> so you've grown up here in, in Svensson, Georgia? Yes, I grew up. Well, my parents grew up uh, here. I have a little brother. My father is fisherman. My brother also fisherman. Every so often, these isolated waterways emerge from the reeds to reveal one of the hundreds of lakes that form a vast network across the delta. The water is so clear. You can see all the plants coming up. It's like skimming over a forest. Yes, it's like a forest because now, in this period, the water is not so hot. The vegetation starts to grow and it's not so deep. What do you think can be done about keeping the delta pristine and preserving it? We have to discuss with people and to make very powerful messages for them to understand that they are living in a town where it goes uh, Danube rivers, but in here, it's the end. Mm. And we receive everything where they are... Well, they're, they're chucking away. Yes. It's, it's kind of treated like Europe's toilet. We have very natural beach yeah. in our village. And when our uh, storming days, all trashes from the sea came to our beach. It's fragile ecosystem here. Beautiful. Yeah. You know, very beautiful, <laughs> but fragile. <laughs> still, fragile. still fragile. On the way back from our waterborne safari, we spotted a makeshift fisherman's camp perched on the banks of the Danube. I couldn't resist taking a closer look. What is it? Luckily, we were welcomed with open arms and the promise of some campfire cuisine. So we've timed this rather well. I was getting a bit hungry, actually, after <laughs> traveling around those waterways for a few hours. I love this little community here. Do they come here just for the summer? Because it looks like a makeshift camp. It's, it's not all year round. They came just for spring yeah. during season. They are uh, coming from uh, Mahmoudia, uh, 45 kilometers up on the river. Yes. So these guys have Turkish ancestry? Turkish and Ukrainians. And Ukrainian? Yes. yes. Ah, it's okay. a mix of cultural. You know, Dobroja have more than 12 yeah. uh, minorities. And so how long will they be here? The season starts in March or in April. And now we are almost in the end of the season. Where do they go after that? Do they're, they fish for different fish? Or? Yes, different fish and different channels. If it's not frozen, they are fishing. They're fishing all the time? Yes. I see, right, so it's that simple. Gut and uh, prepare your herring and put it on a stick. Fish sticks. Yes, and they will yeah. put it in the fire. They will yeah. cook for us, and that's it, yes. This is what I mean about fresh Danube cuisine. Caught just there in that river. Three hours later, it's being prepared, stuck on a stick, bunged in a fire and eaten by us. So if you want to experience this, you're going to have to come to the Danube Delta and do it firsthand for yourself. Natural. It's put it with tail down. Yeah. And with head up. And that helps the moisture to go yes. through. OK. Hmm. Very good. And you have herring roe inside. Even better. So we have a bit of caviar in the middle. Hmm. Wow. Having eaten my fill of herring, I headed back out onto the water in time to join local fisherman Emmanuel and his friend as they were finishing their second shift of the day. Do you know how many fish from no, no, the no, waste? No, 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 no. <laughs> so it's a surprise. Surprise. Every time. Every time. <laughs> this is a big net. How long are the nets? Uh, we're also the chinzai Okay. This is a good catch. You expect more. Uh, dimineața, bro. 40 kg, now I'm about 15, 20. Really? OK. Do you think tourism is taking off here in Svante Jorge? Do you think it's good for the town? Yeah, it's good, it's good. It's good. Yeah, how do you say? It's like the only one for locals, in the area of the fish. The fish and then the tourism.
Hauling in your catch is only part of the day's routine. Even with a boatload of herring, there was still plenty of work left to do. It's a delicate business because the net can get stuck in the teeth. And you have to get it off the fish without damaging it or breaking it because a lot of time is wasted mending the nets when they break. Big sturgeon will put a hole straight through your net. And that's happening, thankfully, because of the ban on sturgeon fishing. They're growing again and the numbers are going up. And some of the guys have told me that they've actually had their nets holed by large sturgeon heading up river, which is an encouraging thing to hear. So the herring season almost finished, and then you go into the river. Pe Dunăre și pe Schin, la Crap, la Somn, cu alte scule, puțin mai, mai, ochiul mai mare. OK. Și în septembrie, pe lacuri. Thank you very much. Well, I've got my three fish here, and I'm going to take them to the collection point and see what they're worth. I suspect not a huge amount. What is your? Cât costă peștele? Un puțin, da? 0.8 kilograms. 0.8. 10 lei. 10 lei. 10 lei. Well, I think I'll be taking these home in that case and cooking them back at base. What's the mask? <laughs> that was a waste of time. <laughs> Although the fishing industry is the lifeblood of this community, tourism is providing a more and more tempting alternative to the early mornings and day-to-day -day existence of feast and famine. During the season, a procession of floating hotels converge from all over Europe funnel down the Danube until they wind up here, unloading a steady stream of visitors, pockets laden, looking to commemorate the culmination of their two-week cruise. So here's a thought. Big cruise ships come past Fuente Jorge all the time with loads of tourists, with loads of money. And yet there's only one supermarket, a pharmacy, a kind of couple of restaurants, although I'm not 100% sure about that, and very little else. This town is missing a trick. You know that a community could benefit from some tourist development when one of the biggest shows in town is frogs mating. Round the corner at Green Village, it was time for lunch. So I collared head chef Sorin to show me two versions of De Brugge's famous fish chorba the traditional recipe and his own off-piste variation. What I love about this sort of cooking is that it's so simple. You've got your tripod, you've got your cauldron, you've got your water, and then you just need your ingredients. This is it. A good food made with local products, fish from the Danube, the vegetables from our garden, and that's it. And that's it. I guess it's easier to grow your own than it is to bring it all the way here. Yes, it's expensive to bring vegetables yeah. here. Let me show you what we've got here. Okay. Tomato paste. We have catfish, yeah, a big one. That's uh, som in Romanian. Yeah, som. Okay. Literally sleepy fish. Lazy fish. Lazy Lots fish. Lazy fish. Because they hang out on the bottom and eat what and floats feet. down. Yeah. yeah. They grow quite big, don't they? Maybe. Well, uh, let's tell we have one uh, 100 kilos. 100 kilos? One piece. That's larger than, than me. Almost like me. Almost as big as you. <laughs> Almost like me. <laughs> so we what have the vegetables from our garden. And here, the vegetables for the traditional soup. And the head. Do we eat the, the head? Or is that just for fish. decoration? No, no, no. We, we eat the head it. as well. Yeah. Okay. The traditional way to cook is to use the head mm -hmm. and the tail. For the flavor. Yeah, for nice. the flavor. OK, so the plan is that Anka is going to be cooking the traditional fish chorba from here. And Serene, you're going to be doing your own version, aren't you? My own version, the same ingredients with a twist. Which yeah. we'll find out a little bit later. Yes. OK, so proceed, please. OK. I imagine it's quite hard to catch one of these things, isn't it? Because, I uh, mean, no. it might pull you in when you... Here, yeah, you will not cut it with your line. With a boat, a yeah, big net. We will take the fish and put it... To in the boil, boiling water. In the so boiling water. So good. Right. We'll put some oil. Vegetable oil, yeah? The vegetable oil. You wouldn't use an olive oil or soft no, no, It's no, got no. to be vegetable Only oil. Only vegetable oil. OK. Fine. The same ingredients like the traditional okay. chorba. Yeah. Anka will start to make her own chorba, the traditional way. The onion, the peppers, yep. in big pieces, not mm -hmm. very small. No. OK. Yeah. She will put the potatoes. And after this, she will put the fish. 
a little bit of tomatoes, a little bit of vinegar, and that's all. And then we're done. OK, she's racing ahead. i better let you uh, catch up. You're using well, the, pretty much the same vegetables. Pretty much the same. Just that's parsley. The parsley and the garlic. There are quite a few people from the village working here at Green Village, aren't there? Yes. Almost 30 or 40 people. It was better for us and for them to be all from here. The fish um, offer them money yeah. without... Uh, yeah, without the commitments. Without commitments. But you have insurance, pension, yeah? Yeah. Part of them understand this and come to work. This is the real reason why I'm saying this, because the population is getting older and older, and people don't want to fish, the young generation. They want to leave, don't they? Yes, because they didn't understand that the tourism here in Svinto Gheorghe can give them a nice life. We will put the salt. A small handful of salt. Yeah. And that's and black pepper, yeah? Black pepper, It will be a little spicy. After that, we will put some tomatoes. Some tomatoes? Yeah. That's quite a lot of tomatoes. But th this is not a paste, this is... This no, is no, this is... Uh, your own chopped tomatoes. Chopped tomatoes, yeah. yeah. See the meat? It's starting to disintegrate a bit. Yeah. I'm getting more and more hungry watching this. Yeah. How long, ideally, would you want to let the soup cook for? One or two hours. Let it cook a... while you pitch yeah. your tent. You take your palinka and after that, and you, you eat. Forget about it for a while and then you come back. Sanitata. Yes. Norok. Norok. Life is better now. Life is always better after a palinka. Yeah. Well, since we made enough to feed 5,000 people, I thought we'd better have the whole team. And, guys, you're going to be tasters, so we can compare and contrast. Thanks very much, Sirin. Thank you, Anka. You're welcome. Bon appetit. Thank you. Enjoy. <laughs> Sirin, that's really good. It's like a lobster bisque. I don't know how you've managed to achieve that without the use of seafood. Yes, I managed to do this with uh, catfish, yeah. garlic and some herbs. But it does taste. It tastes like a crab or lobster. Almost the same taste. Yeah. Almost the same taste. I'm slightly reluctant to part with this one, but yeah, I, I will. I will do you as well. The traditional soup's a bit more watery, and stronger flavour of the vegetables, but it, it's extremely nice. Anka, congratulations. Thank, Thank you. Nice. Okay, there's just one thing missing. Excuse me a moment. Okay. Oh. Well, you wow. did say it was traditional, didn't you? So. Yeah. <laughs> in for a penny, in for you a palinka. Understand the tradition. Really. I do. I'm learning the tradition very quickly. <laughs> Cheers. To Svante Jorge, to the Danube Delta, and to hospitality. And thank you to the team for making it all look so beautiful. You're it welcome. is. It's not a difficult job, this bit, really. <laughs> no, it's quite easy. <laughs> it's very easy. <laughs> Hard as it was to say goodbye to this wet and wonderful corner of Romania, it was time to venture south to explore one of the more commercial regions of the country and experience a bit of Black Sea beach culture. The southeastern tip of Romania is full of large seaside resorts, many of which date back to the communist era. Hugging the shoreline, you pass towering hotel and apartment complexes with Olympian names. But my destination is a counterculture cul-de-sac close to the Bulgarian border. A few miles from passport control, and you reach Vamaveke, the hippie capital of Romania, where beach bars vie with seafood restaurants and rock cafes. This is a place that exudes cool. People from all over Europe come here in their thousands for the antithesis to the Euro trash club scene. The main street is filled with hawkers and buskers and stalls selling bracelets, T-shirts and memorabilia. The seafront, like everywhere, has deck chairs for rent, but it's low-key, without the obvious VIP areas. This is much more my cup of tea. Relaxed, a little bit hippie, live music, creativity, laid-back beach, volleyball. Yeah, part of that is quite cool.
After an evening checking out the sights and hitting the bars, you might feel in need of a detox. Luckily, there is a lake on the way back north that provides the perfect antidote to a night out on the tiles. Lake Tekirgyol is renowned for its healing mud. A composite of Jurassic sea life and rich silt, it derives its name from the story of a blind, crippled old man called Tekir and his ailing donkey, who once stopped here and were mysteriously healed of their afflictions. According to exhaustive research, saprophyllic mud is good for a number of things. It's great for skin complaints like eczema, also rejuvenates the elasticity of the skin. It's been suggested that it could even be an alternative form of energy. And of course, it contributes to the well-being of the organism, which in this case is yours truly. Slight technical error, the mud appears to be at the bottom of the lake, right out in the middle. So I can't exactly go and jump in it. Luckily, though, for us, they're selling it. Cheers. Ooh, smells a bit fishy. I'm not really relishing the idea of rubbing this all over my body, but when in Rome, Now all I have to do is wait for half an hour and go in the water. I feel actually drying as I'm speaking. It's tightening up the skin. It's quite an interesting effect. It's like having a piece of elastic band or something constricting your skin. Oh, I'm walking like this again. I'm not sure about this. Well, I think that was about 20 minutes. All right, let's see if I can get this off. After a quick rinse off in the lake, as there are no showers and I wouldn't recommend the toilets, it was time to head north for one final stop on my Dobroja Odyssey. A rendezvous with friend and media pundit Danny O'Till at the ancient Greek ruin of Histria, another historic outpost stranded from the Black Sea by the shifting sands of the Danube. This thriving community once covered 60 hectares. Now, as with Algamum, only a small section of it has been reclaimed from coastal grasslands. It nevertheless remains one of the most important archeological sites in Romania. So how come you're walking like a cowboy? Yeah, um... <laughs> I think that's probably because I've been riding the bike for about seven hours yesterday, and you get the sort of John Wayneitis. So you've never been here before? Never been here before. It's amazing to think this was a thriving city for over a millennium. Yeah, uh, thirty thousand people living here, and there are so many sites like this, you know, across Romania. A lot of them are just ignored. I mean, this place has only just popped up on the tourist map. History, you know, a year or two ago, had no one visiting it and yeah. no one protecting it. Yeah. And I'm the barometer. I'm 37, and I found out stuff about this place from you and from the guys here today. That's a pity. When there's so much patrimony, so much heritage in Romania, I think that just gets ignored or left, and it's not being saved, it's not being protected. It's like you have this really, really nice bike, and you, yeah. you never use it, but you go on foot everywhere. Do you think that this is to do with the lack of interest on behalf of everyone in the country? They don't care about the patrimony? Or do you think, as I do, that it's just the fact that the government make no funds available to actually protect iconic buildings? I think the last 50 years affected us, and we are not that interested in art, culture, and uh, we care less and less about that, and uh, more and more about what we eat and what we drink and where we sleep. And unfortunately, uh, the new wave comes, but it comes really slow. I have people around me that, that care about that, but they don't have the power still or yet. 
and Ceausescu convinced people that concrete and cement and straight lines was a sign of power. That's a hard thing to shake off. People still think that living in an old house is somehow unevolved. That's true. My parents for sure believed that. Maybe half of me believed that until 10 years ago. If you can involve money or business in these areas, if one or two communities start to make money from this, I think everybody's going to wake up and they say, hey, hey, we have this in the back of our yard. Let's do the same like those. But you've got to do it in the right way. That's the key thing. Let's face it. Uh, six-story concrete pension next to this place because people can then come and stay and see history yeah. will ruin it. And that's a major problem because it means, again, cultural tourists who are the ones with the money won't want to go and see these places any longer because they'll be ugly. There is a hope. I just talked to one of my friends that's a really, really a young businessman. He just told me he wants to make some traditional houses in the north of the country and uh, make a small village there. So him, his partner, maybe 50 guys like him can, can bring back the hope. Maybe if we can do this uh, shooting in 50 years from now, we can have some conclusions. Otherwise, right now, we are um, on really thing nice, because this is not going to stay here. Well, wow. Look at this mosaic. This is 2,600 years old. And we are walking on it. And we're allowed to walk all over it. Yeah. I mean, that shouldn't even be a walkway there. That yeah. should be sealed off. And this should be under that much glass. In Rome, you always see glass and you walk on the glass. In any other country, this would be completely protected. Yeah. And look at it here, it's just falling to pieces. Now I feel bad, let's go. Let's go, I know, we're walking on it. But we should uh, gingerly, but carefully. A thousand people are gonna come I know. maybe this year here. Okay, so if you do come here, yeah. please don't walk on this. One of the ways that you could bring visitors to a place like this, of course, is to hold a celebration yeah. of the old traditions. Of course, this would be qualified as domestic abuse in today's modern age. In today's modern age. Bravo! I think we do this, don't we? She can live. Now this. Uh, no. I think he's uh, with the potatoes and she's on TV. Wow. This is quite a workout. This gets you fit, right? Very fit. You've got, I notice you've got scars. Is this from? Yes. Oh, is that all right? That looks, that looks so. Is it okay? Yeah. It's okay. Right, okay. okay. You just have to operate on the basis no. that I'm not actually going to stab you in the face. I work with my face. You work with your voice. Yeah, this is true. I need my face less than you do. <laughs> yeah. Ah! <laughs> you see? Hey. <laughs> you flinched. Me? You flinched. No, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, true. See you in 50 years, man. Yeah, it's already catching up with me. <laughs> Bravo. What's the meme? Join us next time as I drive north to explore Moldova, where I'll be seeing how wine tourism is providing a tempting alternative to traditional attractions. Plus, we will be visiting the historic city of Yash, perusing ancient castles, learning more fabulous local recipes, and experiencing another less promoted area of this largely undiscovered country. All that and more in Flavors of Romania.